subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. From the evidence of the earliest use of tobacco to the coldest temperature ever achieved in a lab. These are some of the stories that we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. I am Mohana Basu and every week on the Prince Scientifix, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. It seems that humans' addiction to tobacco dates back to 12,300 years ago, which is much earlier than previously thought. A team of scientists from Utah have discovered charred remains of the seeds in the US that indicates that some of the first people to arrive in the Americas used tobacco. The discovery pushes back the timeline of tobacco use by over 9,000 years. Of all the intoxicant plants that humans use and abuse, tobacco, according to the team, has had the most social and economic impact. Tobacco often played a role in ceremonies or healing in the ancient Maya and other indigenous American groups. Until now, the earliest evidence of human tobacco use was nicotine found in smoking pipes in Alabama that dated back about 3,300 years. But the new discovery changes what we know about the history of tobacco use. For this study, the archaeologists excavated the remains of a hunter-gatherer camp that had been exposed by wind over time in the Great Salt Lake Desert in Utah. The team found an ancient fireplace surrounded by stone artifacts such as spear tips. More than 2,000 bones and bone fragments, mostly belonging to ducks, were also recovered, suggesting that this is what the people ate. Within the fireplace, the scientists found the remains of four charred tobacco seeds. Also this week, physicists in Germany have produced the coldest temperature ever recorded in lab. By dropping a chamber of gas and switching a magnetic field on and off to bring its atoms to an almost complete standstill, the team managed to achieve a temperature 38 trillionths of a degree above absolute zero. The temperature was measured as minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Absolute zero is the coldest temperature possible on the thermodynamic scale. At this point, there's no atomic motion or heat at all. But it is not really possible to reach that mark since all the kinetic energy from the atoms cannot be removed. But this experiment is the closest that scientists have ever gotten to absolute zero. They used a cloud of 100,000 atoms of rubidium trapped in a magnetic field in a vacuum chamber. They then cooled this down to form what is known as the Bose-Einstein condensate where the element begins to show strange quantum properties that are usually not observable. They then dropped the experiment over 120 meters during which the magnetic field was switched on and off repeatedly. When the magnetic field is off, the gas begins to expand and when it's turned back on, the gas is forced to contract again. This switching slows the expansion of the gas, bringing the atoms to a complete stop and reducing this molecular speed effectively reduces the temperature. While the experiment only managed to achieve this record-breaking temperature for up to two seconds, simulations showed that it should be possible to maintain this for up to 17 seconds in a weightless environment such as a satellite. Although previous studies have suggested that Venus may have been a much more hospitable place in the past with liquid water oceans, a new study this week suggests that this is not the case. Using sophisticated simulations, researchers from Switzerland found that the temperatures never got low enough on the planet of Venus for the water in its atmosphere to form raindrops that could fall on its surface. Instead, water remained as a gas in the atmosphere and oceans never formed. The team notes that Venus is like Earth's evil twin. While the two planets are comparable in that they have similar mass and size, both consist mostly of rocky material, hold some water and have an atmosphere, 
A closer look reveals striking differences between them. For example, Venus has a thick carbon dioxide atmosphere, extreme surface temperatures and pressure, and sulfuric acid clouds which are in stark contrast to the conditions needed for life on Earth. The team studied how the atmospheres of the two planets would have evolved over time and whether oceans could form in the process. The simulations also reveal that the Earth could have easily suffered the same fate as Venus if it had been just a little closer to the Sun, or if the Sun had shone as brightly in its youth as it does nowadays. The relatively weak radiation of the young Sun is what allowed the Earth to cool down enough to condense the water that forms our oceans. Shortly after the dinosaurs were wiped off the face of the Earth, the evolution of modern snakes expanded rapidly as they had the opportunity to feed on a wide variety of prey. a new study has found this week. The asteroid wiped out nearly all of the dinosaurs and roughly three quarters of the planet's plant and animal species 66 million years ago, giving opportunity for mammals to diversify. Snake species were evolving quickly and rapidly acquiring the ability to eat new types of prey. Mammals and birds, which were also diversifying in the wake of the extinction, began to appear in snake diets at that time. Specialized diets also emerged such as snakes that feed only on slugs or snails or snakes that eat only lizard eggs. The researchers looked at a data set that included more than 34,000 direct observations of snake diets from published accounts of scientists' encounters with snakes in the field and from the analysis of the stomach contents of preserved museum specimens. They then looked at genetic data in a new mathematical model that allowed them to infer that extinct snake species were like. The study also revealed that similar explosive dietary shifts occurred when groups of snakes colonized new locations. Meanwhile, astronomers have discovered unusual signals coming from the direction of the Milky Way's center that suggests the presence of a new stellar object that has not been described before. The radio waves detected by the team does not fit the currently understood pattern of variable radio source. Many types of stars emit variable light across the electromagnetic spectrum. With advances in radio astronomy, the study of variable or transient objects in radio waves is a huge field which helps us to reveal the secrets of the universe. Pulsars, supernovae, Flaring stars and fast radio bursts are all types of astronomical objects whose brightness varies. But the signals from this new source does not match what is expected from known types of celestial objects. The scientists now plan to keep a close eye on the object to look for more clues as to what it might be. That is all for this week. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, you can now join the Prince YouTube membership to get special membership perks such as early access to our key reports as well as exclusive community content on the YouTube channel. You can do so through the link in the description box below.